Since 1947, the World Affairs Council has become the preeminent global stage for world leaders and the public to inform, engage, and debate the most important issues of our time. It's your world. Get to know it. The history of the bank was that it, it really took form after World War II and it was designed to try and reconstruct and develop the things that had been destroyed uh, in World War II. <clears throat> but after France and Germany and Italy and other countries that had been affected, the United Kingdom, uh, the board decided that it should have its focus on developing countries. And there the issue was for many of them uh, as it still is, to try and focus on the question of getting people from a level of poverty and development to something that was giving them an opportunity for a better life. And so the bank, when I got there uh, in 1995, we were dealing with a world of six billion people, um, or a little less actually at that time. And five billion of them lived uh, in what were called developing conditions. 20% of the world uh, uh, had 80% of the income. And the 80% of the world had 20% of the income. And so this was a distortion in terms of what was equity or social justice. In my second annual meeting speech, I, I was drafting it out and I conceived of the phrase, the cancer of corruption. I thought it was a pretty good phrase. And the general counsel came to me and he said, Jim, I'd like to see you outside your office. And so I went into the, uh, some large area with him. And he said, Jim, you cannot use the C word. And I said, what the hell is the C word? He said, corruption. <laughs> and I said, why can't I use the C word? He said, well, you have 24 uh, directors on the board and quite a number of them represent corrupt countries. And if you want to keep your job, you probably shouldn't do it. <laughs> and I said, well, that's nonsensical. And so I made my speech about the cancer of corruption. And six months later, in the semi-annual meeting, every minister talked about corruption and how they were not corrupt. <laughs> when I was at the Could bank, we, we, the two big lenders that I had between 1995 and 2005 was China and India. And we lent them each $3 billion a year, which is not a huge amount for those countries, but was hugely important both as a financial contribution, but more importantly as a way to pass experience and technology across to these countries. And also to get into the most impoverished areas, uh, which is something that we had some experience in. So I really felt that that was something that was hugely important for us to do, and, and we did it. What has happened, of course, since then is that today in the $9,000 billion of international reserves, China ranks number one. Uh, Japan happens to be number two, but Russia is now three or four. Uh, and in the top ten, you've got seven countries that we would previously have called developing countries. United States ranks in the 20s to 30s.